early, but I uh, often, as I usually do, I have to make sure that uh, technologically uh, we're doing okay. And I, if this is anything like the Wednesday night shows, I'm guessing that uh, we're going to have some issues where uh, the, the video may freeze up, but my understanding is the audio is always good. And it seems that I can always read the comments uh, in the live chat, so I don't want anybody to wor uh, worry about that. Um, the think tank is a little bit different. Actually, it's a lot different than what you are used to if you watch the Wednesday night shows. Of course, the think tank is limited to people who are Patreon supporters at the $12 a month level and up. Okay, so usually on Sunday nights, we get a very small group, sometime, somewhere between five and 10 people, and that's great. We can have a lot of good one-on-one -on -one discussions, but that's all we talk about during on Sunday nights. We don't talk about the wide range of topics that are usually covered on Wednesday nights. Um, so that is what is going it's going to be like tonight. Um, I'm not taking any well, I will take questions from uh, from you the audience about Molly Miller and Colt Haynes disappearances. But anything other than that, we're not talking about it tonight. That's reserved for Wednesday. Uh, if you're very new to the program and are just tuning in and want a more wide-ranging discussion, a little more um, less serious, I guess you might call it, then you're better off tuning in on Wednesday nights because tonight we are going to concentrate on Molly's and Colt's disappearances and nothing else. And in fact, Cherie, who uh, you will see her in the chat room, she has the blue, uh, her name is in blue with a little wrench beside it. She is under strict orders that if anybody tries to ask questions about anything else, she's just going to delete the comment. Um, because although we do this because it is interesting and everything else, we do these think tanks because we are trying to help the guest or the guests or the family, uh, whoever we think um, could use help and trying to figure out what might have happened. And that's why the think tank exists. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing uh, this evening. And uh, we may go an hour, we may go longer, we'll just go until I think that we've covered uh, everything that we need to cover re regarding this disappearance. Obviously, obviously, there's a lot, obviously, there's a lot to cover. And as you will see in my description of this um, think tank we're doing tonight. Um, I put out some sample questions, things that I thought might get your mind going in that direction. Keep in mind, we're not here to argue over theories. We are having a discussion. We're allowed to disagree. You all can have discussions amongst yourselves. Once again, it must be limited to Colt and Molly's disappearance. Okay. So this is something we, we do as a way to help the guests. This is not for, how do I want to put it? Not for the audience's entertainment like it kind of is on Wednesday nights. This is a very constructive um, time that we need to use to come up maybe with some new ideas, maybe things that Paul, uh, Paul of the guest from Friday haven't thought of and the rest of her family haven't thought of. So I... I'm not going to name out people's names and welcome them and everything uh, tonight because that's uh, just not – I'm going to read what people have to say about the disappearance, but I want you all to know, even if I don't mention your name, that I greatly appreciate you joining in tonight. Um, the reason we're doing this is, of course, we're hoping that this will bring some more people to become into Patreon to be supporters. But also, this is a case that I think a lot of people are interested in. Uh, there is going to be an, uh, a series on Oxygen Channel eventually, I think, before the year is over. So there's a lot of eyeballs on this case. And once again, between Cherie and I, we thought this was a good way to introduce people to what goes on in the think tank. And because I guess I think for a lot of people, it's been uh, a, a mystery because it is restricted. And even the videos, once they're done, 
certain people can access the video on YouTube, everybody else can't. That that is the standard. Whereas on Wednesday nights, of course, those shows on YouTube are free for everybody. So let's get um, right into it. And I once again, I thank everybody for joining in. Uh, I anticipate having way more people than we usually do on Wednesday nights. And pro I promise you, I will try to uh, read your comments, but there's going to be a lot of them. So if I miss your comment, do not take it personally. I'm sure eventually everybody's theories and comments you're going to get mentioned uh, one way or the other, but just in the forum that we tried to do for this uh, format, I don't know if it's going to be possible uh, to do that. So let's get right into this. First of all, it's going to help if you've already listened to Friday's episode. If you haven't, then you might just want to watch and listen, okay? Uh, we don't need anybody getting in here and asking things if they haven't listened to the episode because they may be a little clueless about the circumstances, about what Paula said, what my summation was, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is really limited to people who have listened to the episode, have ideas, have questions after listening. Okay, so I just, once again, a little bit different than on Wednesday nights where it's uh, a little more laid back. So I'm just going to start right here. And um, we'll go from there. First question. And once again, uh, one more thing. Uh, some of this will pertain to the blog that I wrote on Patreon. Although it is not a prerequisite, you must have read my blog on Patreon to take part. As long as you've listened to the episode between Friday and now, you're, you're surely able to make uh, some constructive comments and, and have intelligent conversation. Uh, the Patreon blog that I write, is, of course, is for Patreon supporters, but it is not a prerequisite to taking part in this discussion. Okay, so don't feel bad if you haven't read it yet or you're not even a Patreon supporter. And in fact, this video is for uh, mostly, it's going to be mostly non-Patreon supporters in here. So uh, let's get right to it. The first question I have on my list is, is it a coin? And then once I read the way it goes in the think tank, I will read the question and then I will give some background and my th thoughts. And then as people uh, respond, I will read some of your responses and that's how we get a conversation going. Um, is it a coincidence that this was the first time Con and Colt were ever together and this is the time that Colt disappeared. The reason I ask this is because um, many times uh, I'm left with this question, and maybe you are too. Something happens for the first time, and then a person disappears. And we are left to try to figure out that this person disappeared because it was the first time of something that's going on, or is it just a coincidence? Maybe the best example outside of uh, this particular case is Brian Schaefer's case. Did he disappear because he wasn't seen on a video leaving the ugly tuna? Or was him disappearing and him not see, seen, living the, uh, seen living the ugly tuna a coincidence? Of course, to this day, we still don't know. Well, in this case, uh, what we learned from Paula, Molly's cousin, is that Con and Colt were not friends and they did not hang out together. And we are to believe that this night when Con, Con or the, even the day before on July 7th, when he, uh, when Con and Colt and Molly get to, got together, that was the first time that maybe Con and Colt had ever even been in a car together. And then 24 hours later, um, Colt disappears. Now we can go in a few different directions with this. If it's not a coincidence, then I guess what we're saying is that Colt and Molly's disappearance was planned 24 hours before they actually disappeared, which was like 9, 9.30 in the morning of July 8th. If it is a coincidence, then I guess what we are to believe is that something transpired over those next 24 hours in which Colt and Molly disappeared and it wasn't planned. So I'm interested to read your um, insight into that. Um, so please uh, start, uh, you can comment on that. That is the 
the first topic. And that is something that I wrote about in the blog. And uh, I think it's always a worthy question. I think that that's a good place to start because um, this kind of... All right, so Miranda's thing, I think it is just a coincidence. So if it's just a coincidence that they were in this car for the first time or got together for the first time, then what you're saying, I, Miranda, if you could expound on that a little bit, is are you then thinking that it was something else that caused their disappearance? Once again, if Khan is involved, which I think, and we'll get to that question specifically before this is all over, but, um, and then Kelly Lee is also agreeing. She says, coincidence. But I definitely think their hanging out was drug-related. Uh, very good point, Kelly. Uh, I, I tend to agree with you. I guess, you know, maybe a corollary to my original question, Kelly, then, is um, are we then to believe if, once again, if Khan is involved, if, and I'm going to keep saying that, we don't know, are we then saying then that this disappearance is drug-related? Is that what we're saying then? Uh, Maria, definitely drug use related. Okay, but was it a coincidence? Was it something that was planned the morning before? Or was there something that transpired during July 7th into July 8th that then caused the disappearance? I guess what I'm asking is when Con and Colton Molly got together on uh, July 7th in the morning, was it already in Con's head that these two needed to disappear within the next 24 hours. I, I agree with you that they were getting together because it was drug-related, but does that mean the disappearance was drug-related? And of course, we know many other cases where it was. Jeff Josephs, Donnie Smatlax were certainly drug-related. I'm not so sure if it's... Um, I'm not so sure it's obvious in this case. Um... Cherie says, the chase is what began the disappearance. Interesting point, Cherie, that we will certainly cover. Jasmine, just a coincidence, drugs involved. Addicted to tree fall. Don't think it was a coincidence, but do think it was drug-related. I can see you, Cherie. Yes, we uh, can anyone see me? Well, I can see you, Cherie. Maria, coincidence. Miranda, I think it's a coincidence because I don't believe their disappearance was planned. Okay. Layla, possibly drug-related, but there was resentment between Con and Cole Two, apart from that, yes. And I want to talk about that some, too. Um, Oklahoma Moda does not believe it's a coincidence. Susie, drug common denominator, not premeditated. This is interesting to me. Shri, okay, thanks, Tracy. Okay, coincidence, Paula says. All right, so. So I think we got a little bit of a consent. I'm, I, I have to, you have to know something. We are allowed to disagree with each other on this. We're going to try to come to some consensus on all of this. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that with as many people as we have. It's usually easier when you only have five or seven people, not the many that we're going to, we have here. But you're allowed to disagree with me. We're allowed to disagree with each other. I just want to make it cordial. No making fun of anything. And if I say something that is contrary to what you think, and you are certainly allowed to say things contrary to what I think, okay? Um, Adrian, don't think it was planned, but something happened and drugs involved. So, um, so it was a coincidence. So I guess what you're saying, that's what most people were saying. Not everybody. And I'm not even convinced uh, that it is a coincidence. But I guess what we're saying then is there was something that happened between July 7th. So to get into Khan's mind. We're saying that when he picked them up on July 7th in the morning, remember Paula talked about that, how it's still a little bit of a question mark what they did all that day. Paula says she believes that it was having to do with drugs, as many of you are saying. And we don't know where Molly was part of that day either. So what you're saying is when Khan picked them up that morning, he had no uh, idea, no plans, no scheme, no scam, nothing like that regarding making um, Molly and Colt disappear, even though Colt and Khan were surely not friends. I think that's very interesting. Um, Kelly, I believe the root of the entire disappearance was drugs. The guys hanging out was drug-related. 
Her being around the guys in general was drug-related, but not pre-planned. Okay. Well, if that's the case then, then we need to start thinking about if it wasn't, if it is a coincidence, then what was it then during the next 24 hours that changed everything? Because it's it, if the disappearance was drug-related, let's just say it was, then was it really not planned because they were going to be, you know, doing some sort of drug business that day? What could have gone on during the day that regarding this drug business and everything that then flipped everything on its head where Khan had the plans that, you know, Colt and Molly would be going home July 8th and would change to a situation where Khan lives or doesn't disappear. Let's just put it that way. He doesn't disappear and these two do disappear. I'm not, I have to tell you, I'm not sure, at least in the interview that I did with Paula, that it's very evident what could have changed that. Um, Oklahoma, it is jug, it is jug lighted. I don't know what that means, but I don't think Colt killed him. He, Connie doesn't have to, and to kill somebody. I'm not sure what I mean by that Oklahoma move. Christine, I enjoy, uh, um, okay, thanks, Christine. Uh, Oh, uh, thank you, Layla, for those numbers. Um, see, this is this is the thing that um, is is an issue for me personally, and I, of course, I have my own theories and things that I never talk about during um, the the program, and, and never will. The the only time my theories and ideas come up is on the blog that I write for Patreon, and when I do these think tanks. The problem I personally have about it not being pre-planned is there's nothing that has ever come up in the last, it's almost, it's going to be six years. I mean, if you can believe it, July 7th, we are talking about this exactly six years to the day that Molly and Colt got picked up by Con. Coincidence. I, I, this isn't how I planned it. Um, there's nothing that's ever come forward in the come out in the last six years that really you can point at a reason that Colt and Molly would have been made to disappear by anybody. This is, see, this is the issue. Anything that happened during that day, into the night, into the next day, with them walking around out there, this continues to be my problem about it not being pre-planned. Okay, this... You know, I just, um, maybe you'd have to read the blog, but once again, it's not a prerequisite to, um, to, uh, viewing this, you know, to taking part in the think tank. Um, but I think that, uh, Cherie brought up something that was interesting here. Um, she happens to believe that the chase is what started the disappearance. Let's just go to that, being that Cherie brings that up. Um, so if we, I think the consensus here, once again, not all everybody, and I don't want anybody to think that I don't respect their opinion if I say the consensus is different from what you, you personally are thinking. But I think the consensus so far is that their disappearance and Colton Kahn being together for the first time is a coincidence. That's the consensus. That doesn't mean that everybody thinks that way. What do you think about what Sharia is saying? She is th saying that the disappearance is not actually connected to the drugs, but the disappearance is actually connected to the chase for some reason. So let's talk about that a little bit, and that is something that I also wrote about in the blog. Maria, we all know that illegal drug use leads to all types of situations, homicide, missing people, fights that get out of control, overdose, really, but we need to find out. I, I agree with Maria. We need more of uh, who they're getting their dope from. Maria, I think that that would probably be a, a good idea. Uh, I, I have to say, though, I'm not so sure that they were getting it, getting it from anybody. Um, if they were dealing in meth or something like that, they could have been cooking that up at home. And in fact, again, that can be cooked up at home like crystal meth, then that's a little bit different. And I believe, and I, I think that they were dabbling in all sorts of things, but 
I think what Paula said was that it was crystal meth, which once again, we know, you know, people, uh, <laughs> there's uh, crystal meth kitchens all over the United States, pe people cooking them up. Um, people cooking that stuff up all over all the time, and we know there have been explosions in apartment complexes and everything uh, regarding that. But what about the chase? Um, what about the disappearance being connected to the chase? And if I, I'll just put it, what do I mean by that? Let me just put forward an idea for all of you. And, and once again, it's something that I, I wrote about among many different ideas. And that is that Khan was going to try to pin the chase, uh, and, you know, the car theft, which really wasn't a car theft of Sabrina's car, and the chase on Colt, and by ways of Colt, Molly. And then when that didn't work out, when they could call people to try to come find him, his plan kind of fell apart. And then he then decided he needed to do something about Colt uh, and Molly. Just putting that idea out there. That, of course, then that would not be connected to the drugs, the drug dealing. It's actually connected to the chase. And, of course, now we know the con was often involved in chases uh, at the time. Um, Kelly says the chase very well could have been the beginning. Good thought. Uh, I think that that's something, you know, the, the reason I think we have to think about that, and I'm glad Cherie brought it up, is that, once again, regarding all of this drug stuff, we haven't heard anything regarding that. Once again, let me allow me to use a comparison. Um, let's use the Jeff Joseph case, which was about drugs. He went to Cal. If you're not familiar with that case, uh, I would go back and listen to it. It came out in March of 2017, where... He disappears, and suddenly his marijuana that he was growing in Northern California in uh, Humboldt County, his guys that were working for him, these, they're all suddenly bathing in cash and everything, and then he's the one that's missing. Of course, his vehicle is still missing. Fairly obvious that they did it for monetary reasons, so they could keep the marijuana for themselves. They could sell it themselves. And Jeff wouldn't get the stuff that he actually put his money into the this work, this growing uh, that he was doing, uh, and they were working for him. It's not as obvious in this that there was somebody who got rich off of Colt and Molly disappearing if it was over drugs. That's what I'm saying. Just not as obvious. <laughs> Addiction, uh, I do not believe in coincidence. This is way deeper than we know. Very well could be. Kelly, could still be drug-related if Colt and Molly were high when left in the woods. Could explain why they didn't know why they were. Okay, Kelly. That's interesting. Kelly, Molly had been there before, Jessica. She would have known where she was. Maybe. Uh, Car Kelly, at least shouldn't have known the road they went down or that they were by Con's house. You know, Kelly, you, you bring up very good points. Uh, I don't know if... You know, we're ever going to be able to explain um, why they couldn't direct friends in the proper direction. I don't know if we're ever going to find out why DJ, you know, was off on Bear Hollow Road, which is nowhere near Long Hollow Road. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to explain why the f those four, if we're to believe them, couldn't find Colt and Molly in the daylight. Um, you know, of course, we it brought it came up in the episode. I don't know if we're, until this case is solved if we're ever going to know why if Molly and Colt, one of them had a phone with GPS on it, why they couldn't use it. Maybe they did have track phones, as Paula said. This is why we have these think tanks to uh, you know sort this all out. But I do, uh, I am um, enamored with the idea that this disappearance did not necessarily have to do with the drugs. Now, granted, you know, people dealing in drugs, usually rough characters, but that it had to do with something else, you know, mainly this chase, or it could be simply that Colt was ticked off, Con went back out there after he deserted him, and they had an argument and something happened. Uh, Shuri, I think they didn't know where they were because they had been using meth and hadn't slept in seven days. Okay. 
Kelly, did JGJ mention that what Molly's demeanor was, if she was acting herself or not? You know, um, Paula, you know, you heard the same interview I did. And of course, you haven't had a chance to talk to Paula as much as I did. That um, nobody outright, I, I believe, is outright came out and said they sounded high. Okay, nobody has said that, and all. Nobody said that. And being that they were calling people and trying to get help and everything, they might have been a little high, but it doesn't sound to me like they were way high. And totally, they knew they were lost. They knew they needed help. We know that Molly at least dialed 911 once. Why she didn't dial more than that, I don't know. But we know that Colt was ticked off. They might have been doing drugs, but to me, all of those statements show a lot of self-awareness realizing what their situation is which is usually the opposite of being high i'm not saying they were totally sober either okay um jasmine insurance scam or drugs both is still a crime and had to be silenced that's uh so you're saying this could be connected to the chase jasmine that's interesting um addiction says the chase was a diversion for something involving elected officials law enforcement once again we're not going to talk about anything in here that doesn't have anything to do with facts. That's a suspicion. I realize that Sheriff Joe Russell uh, was eventually booted out of office. If anybody can connect him to that area out there that morning, I'd be glad to hear it, but nobody's been able to do that. So, uh, Cherie, please take care of that. Uh, Oklahoma, I think somebody found out they had drugs and someone killed them over drugs, okay, because they got in the way. I I'd love to hear more about that. It's just that we have no facts, you know, regarding that. Um... Why it doesn't sound to me like this was some big tra trafficking operation or anything. Um, Paula, car chase started at all. I don't think anyone planned for anyone to be harmed that night. It just got out of control. Okay. And once again, one more thing. I realize you all have theories and everything, but we're not going to entertain theories that are just connected to hearsay and everything else. We don't do that. I'm not going to uh, invite hearsay, rumors, things like that. Things through her, through the grapevine, and everything else. We realize that Joe Russell was a crooked sheriff, okay? We realize that he had been covering his, his cousin Con Nip's chases for, I don't know, maybe a couple years or something, else, something like that, okay? But we can't, all these years later, still thinking it's a law enforcement conspiracy or something, when all of these different law enforcement agencies are still are now investigating it, okay? So I'm not I'm not doing that. We're not doing that here. You want to dislike Joe Russell? I understand, but unless somebody can put him out there on that morning when Colt and Molly made their last call, it, I, I'm just not going to go there. Let's move on to something else. How do you explain Bonita taking Phil Klein? to a different location. This is something that um, uh, Susie says they were aware enough to make phone calls to relatives. Yeah, and that's my, um, you know, that's my thinking too, Susie, is that uh, they might have been a little high, but they weren't high, so high that they didn't realize that they needed help getting uh, out of these woods or wherever they were, and they were lost. Okay, let's talk about this. How do you explain Bonita taking Phil Klein to a different location? Of course, Phil Klein is a guy that we've talked about quite a bit over the last year, almost exclusively regarding the Thomas Brown case. He has been involved in this disappearance since 2014. I don't know what in what capacity. I don't know if he's been paid. Uh, Paula and I have talked about him, but not um, not a lot. Not a lot. But in regards to the interview, you know, it's are we to dismiss uh, Benita taking him to a different location because she just doesn't understand directions? Or is, is there more to it? I think normally would think, well, maybe she just got confused and one road starts looking like the next and maybe she's not from that area. I'm sure we can come up with a lot of sort of different reasons. Not necessarily excuses, but reasons. 
But the fact that DJ Epley, a friend of, of Colts or Molly's, went out there, couldn't find them, and it, to hear Paula say it, just drove home, which it sounds that that just sounds a little weird. I, I don't think I would do that. I think that if a friend of mine was lost somewhere, I don't think I would go home. I don't think I would. Um, so there's that. I'd still continue to drive around and everything. And then on top of that, we have these four who went to cons. You heard that in the interview. They follow Khan's suggestion. Once again, we don't know if it's true or not. But they drive down to an area that he says is near there. But really, just one guy gets out of the car. He allegedly jumps over the fence. Here's a horse. Here's an ATV. Comes back to the car, and they leave. That doesn't sound to me like serious searching. <clears throat> so this is what adds in to the idea. Was Bonita leading Phil Klein in a different direction because she was just lost? Or was she doing it for some other reason? Um, um, Kelly says, uh, Bonita is a weird one. Didn't she take him there two years later? If I had only been somewhere once in a county roads, I don't know if I'd remember either, and I'm very good with directions in general. Joyce, this case is complicated. It all sounds fishy to me. Thank you, Joyce. Kelly, no way would I leave the area if a friend was lost, and why wouldn't you wait to see who was on the horse and ATV? These are all good questions. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, I'm wondering what the rest of you uh, think about that. Um, it's, it's true. Uh, you're right. Benita did not go. It's not like Phil Klein was with her a week later. Uh, I, I, that's true. It, and he didn't get involved till a year later. So it had to have been sometime after that. You know, the issue what I would have is it's not like, uh, Molly's and Colt's families are shrinking violets. They were, uh, I think a year later, surely everyone knew, uh, where the car had been found uh, where Con Nip lives and all these things, but still, you know, wouldn't Benita just kind of say, well, we went down in this area and she would already know where the car had been found and everything? Wouldn't she know that? I, th I think that she would, and you know, especially since she was personally involved in it. Unless, you know, she's totally, totally clueless about it. Um... Sandy R. says, I don't understand why they didn't look look longer and call for help in searching. Um, I, You know, Sandy, I agree. I agree. I mean, we don't have any explanation as to why um, why Molly only call, called 911 once. We don't have any explanation as to why Colt seemingly, allegedly broke his ankle or hurt his ankle, um, sprained it or something, and he didn't call 911 either. I, I mean, if they're lost and they can't direct people to their location, I don't know what an ambulance is going to be able to do anyway. But these are very good questions. Did they not want to call because of... Uh, Maybe there were drugs in the car or something like that. I guess we can entertain that idea. But, you know, I think that uh, given the circumstances, I would have thought they would have called 911 more than once, but, but they didn't. Um, this is, uh, so anybody have any more insights into Benita? What are we to make of Benita? Did she lead Klein in the wrong direction because she did it on purpose? For some reason or did she do it simply because that's what she believed and she was just completely way off uh, that so I want you all to think about that and discuss that of course I think we've already uh, the next question on my list is do you find it strange that Colt and Molly's friends didn't look for them harder I think that the answer here is yes I think that um, we are suspicious about this. We're, uh, I'm not, maybe not that they came out. They, I mean, at least they came out, but that, um, they came out and then it doesn't seem like they really 
stayed out there long enough. I mean, all DJ and then the other four, they went home and, and Molly and Colt were still out there. So I think what we're saying is we do find it strange. Um, this, uh, let me see what it's, Paula, because of Khan and his family, maybe no one had to get involved. That's it. I, I can accept that, Paula, but then why would go out in the first place? Maybe they were afraid. Totally understand what you're saying. Paula, maybe the, of course, I'm sure in their circles, they know that Khan's been stealing these cars. Maybe they're afraid of him and everything. Makes total sense. Then why go out in the first place if they're afraid? I, I, just a question. Maybe you have an answer to that. Um, they were just involved in a high-speed chase. I'm surprised they called 911 at all. Okay, Cherie, but, but the thing is is that Colt and Molly were not responsible for that high-speed chase. They weren't the driver. Maybe... Maybe Khan wanted made them to make it look like they were the driver, which is something that I, I wrote about in the blog, and it's, I think, that where you were going earlier, but uh, they don't know at that point that Khan's going to try to pin that on them. I mean, it's in the end, it's Khan's girlfriend's vehicle. So, mm-mm, Okay. Carrie, I shouldn't think I shouldn't think they were able to call, but when she called nine one one, why didn't they send someone? They should have had her latitude and longitude on the sc screen from the phone ping. See, Carrie, this is Carrie. If you don't know everyone, Carrie is our uh, is our personal nine one one call expert because I think that uh, she uh, that was her job at one time, and I, I love having hearing reading her insight. Um, well. The thing is, Carrie, the way I understand it is that <clears throat> it was from Molly's phone, but no, they never heard a voice. So I think they just dismissed it as some sort of butt dial or something. I think. I don't think that came out in the interview, uh, but I'm just inferring that being that there was no voice on there, that they might have just dismissed it. Maybe. Kelly, could they get phone pings from the four people to see where they actually went that day? Uh, I suppose they could have, Kelly, but it's probably a little late from that on uh, now. Maybe not. Maybe. But I, I guess conceivably they could back then for almost for sure. Now, um, I don't know if those records would still be around or not, Kelly. Sandy, very strange. If it were my friends and I would have moved mountains to find them no matter what or who stood in my way. I agree with you, Sandy. So I, once again, um, we do find it strange that Colt and Molly's friends didn't look for them hard. We're still not, I guess, uh, I'm getting, being that we didn't get a lot of responses to this, I'm guessing uh, not a lot of you have uh, a lot of insight into Benita, but that's fine. These are just sample questions. Do you find it strange that Colt and Molly's friends didn't look for them harder? This, I think what all of you are saying, a consensus, is that it's an overwhelming yes. So let's move on to the next question. Does Sabrina know what happened to Colton and, and Molly? Now let's, uh, let me just remind you of something, if maybe if you were not aware of this. The car that was involved in the chase on July 7th into July 8th was not Khan's car. It was Molly's car. Um, and remember, that day, July 8th, she went down and filed a stolen car missing, a stolen car car theft report. Okay, July 8th. She didn't wait a week. She did it July 8th, the day after Khan was driving around in her car with Molly and Colt. Okay? So, and then it was her car that Con was driving, Con, Colt and Molly were in it, that was involved in this chase that we now all know about. Do we believe that Sabrina knows what happened to Colt and Molly? Should we, I guess another way to put this, should we infer that she knows what happened Colt and Molly 
since she was so quick to file that car theft report, even though she knew it was Khan who had her car. Um, yeah, Carrie is a former 911 LEO dispatcher. Um, she says that she gets blown away by the lack of sending EMTs out. It was our policy to always do so. Paula, would young people be as alarmed about the situation as we all would have been? All of us would have kept searching. You know, Paula, that's an interesting question. Maybe kids just don't take these things as seriously as, as adults do. Maybe people with kids, etc. Um, you know, uh, Paula, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I don't know how all old of you are, and it's none of my business. I'm 48. It very well may be, be that way. It very well may be. And being that being that they were all friends, meaning they all might have kind of been in the drug culture together a little bit, maybe that could add to it. Um. Uh, Paula, maybe I think that's a really uh, good point. Uh, I'm a loss to what to say because I don't have any kids. I'm not going to try to, as a single uh, guy with no kids, I'm not going to try to explain young kids these day, days. I don't have a lot of interaction with them unless I go to disc golf tournaments. But maybe that's a possibility. And maybe some of you who have teenagers into their 20s, you could maybe run that by them and see what they think. It would be interesting to me. Uh, uh, Sharia is agreeing with you, Paula. Susie's agreeing with you, Paula. Um, Sharia says, I think Sabrina knew, knows. Uh, Jasmine also believes that Sabrina knows. Uh, Addicted says, yes, Sabrina knows. Tracy says, yes, Sabrina knows. Paula says, Sabrina knows, maybe not everything, but enough that she could have helped find them. Carrie says, yes, Sabrina knows. Wow, okay. I guess we're consensus here. Layla, she knows something. Otherwise, when she reported the car, car stolen, she'd have said Khan stole it. Why report it stolen when your boyfriend took it? Layla, thank you for just putting it uh, as succinctly as you did. Exactly. On July 8th, she was already filing a false police report. Sandy, do we know if Molly and Colt were friends of Sabrina's? I don't know if that was ever established. Uh, what I think I can say, Sandy, is being that Molly and Con knew each other, we established that. But I'm going to say that Molly and Sabrina probably didn't know each other, although I don't know if they were friends. Um, Joyce says, I don't see any timelines there that I can follow. I think Con and someone else killed and buried before all the ho hollaboos started. Well, we're going to get to that, Joyce. You just hang on. Kelly, I do think she knows what happened, but I don't think it's that odd that she fouled it the next day since this all happened at 11.30 p.m. Well, but you have to remember something, Kelly, is that, that, um, that uh, it seems, once again, to understand the timeline the way I do, that Colt and Molly's uh, last phone calls, which were around nine something, remember, we talked about that, they... Both of their phones shut off within like seven minutes of each other. Within hours of their phones going off, Sabrina went and filed that car theft report. Once again, we get back to, is that a coincidence? Or are they, or is it related? I, I, we don't know, but we can at least think about it. Uh, Carrie, I think they snuck out there, which is why they freaked and fled. Um, Addicted says, I think Khan told her to report it stolen. Uh, you know what, uh, Addicted? Uh, I, I, I'm in uh, agreement with you. I don't want that to uh, sway anybody's opinion out there. But that's, it, to me, that's what makes the most sense. That she would not have filed that car theft report if Khan didn't tell her to do so. That is surely the case. Thank you for pointing that out. Stephanie, after the wreck, Khan goes home leaving the kids in the woods. Do phone records show when and whom and the time of his first call? I don't know if anybody has ever seen Khan's phone records, Stephanie. Uh, the only phone records we have are of um, Colts and Molly. So um, police may have them. But uh, surely Paula and anybody in Colt 
and Molly's families would not have access to Colin's phone records. So I just, we just don't know. We know that uh, Colt and or Molly tried calling Con, but that's the only thing we know about Con's phone records. Terry, the only thing I can think of is she didn't know they knew it was was him, or she tried to separate herself from the pursuit. Well, you you know, Carrie, you, you would think that if he was driving her car the full day before that, that then she would know that he has the car. I don't know. The other thing I can think of is if is she didn't know they knew it was him. Okay, Sheree. Well, he had to ex well he had to explain to her where her car was. So Con says he got in another chase, and they decided to report it stolen to make it look like it was someone else. Sheree. Um, as you know, since you probably are, uh, you know, that's kind of the way I'm leaning. Um, I think what we're saying here, getting back to the original question, just to, to bring us back to the basics here. Does Sabrina know what happened to Colt and Molly? It seems the overwhelming consensus for this. Once again, are the people that are, that are commenting, a lot of, I know a lot of people are watching here that aren't commenting, totally fine. Uh, I'm going to guess there's even some people uh, watching this that uh, are on uh, the, the con nip side of this. Um, what we're saying is, and maybe even friends of Sabrina's is, or uh, friends are watching this of Sabrina's. Does Sabrina know what happened to Colt and Molly? I think the consensus is yes. She didn't. Uh, I, I think what we're saying is she didn't take part in it, but she had to know something was up when she filed that police report regarding her car being stolen when it was con her own boyfriend that had it the day before it's you know so uh that's uh, that's something okay so i think the answer to that is yes um this is we kind of touched upon this already regarding bonita but let's just uh talk about it again what happened after the four? I, I, let me rephrase this. Do we believe the four people's, four kids, four friends of Colt's story about what they did after they left Khan's house on July 8th? If, if you want me to get more explicit with it, um, of course, Colt, Colt Khan that called them. They all get together, they go over to Khan's house. Colt is on the phone, I think, with Rob. Rob hands the phone to Con. So at this point, Con's at home. Colt and Molly are still lost out in, you know, not far away, within two miles of Con's house, but they're out there and they don't know where they are. Then the story is that Con told Rob, remember where we ditched that Mustang, which brings in a whole different thing. Why would a friend of Con, a friend of Colt's, know where Khan ditched a car. So there's that. So, but what, and then Rob goes, oh yeah, so they all get back in the car and then they go there and then that's when Rob says he gets out of the car, goes out of view of the other three. Now, why the other three didn't go with them? This is why I'm asking you, do we believe the story? Do we believe a story that Rob got out of the car, the three others stayed in the car, he hears an ATV and a horse goes back to the car. Could we entertain the idea that he actually did see who was on the ATV and who was on the horse? Do we believe that entire story? Uh, the Kelly, but the cops already knew it was Khan because they said he was headed to the road he always went to. You know, Kelly, I, I've thought uh, a lot about this, okay? And I know that's what Paula said, but I'm not sure that that makes total sense. Kelly, I got to tell you, I'm not saying Paula's lying. I think Paula's telling the truth. I think there may be a bit of revisionist history going on here that I don't know if I have a, a long enough time to think about, but you're right. Allegedly... The police said he's headed to the road he always went to. Well, if that's the case, then why didn't the police just go there and stop him? Why didn't they go? If they knew it was Con, 
Why didn't they go to his house that night? Now, I know his, the sheriff and the cousins and all that, you know, I know all that story. I know that. But if they were so sure it was Khan and they were trying to stop him, if they seemingly knew where he was going and where he lives and everything, why didn't they just go wait at his house? See, I think this is a little bit of revisionist. I've convinced myself, once again, me personally, you do not have to think like I do. Um, I've convinced myself that they didn't know that it was Khan driving that car. They, they ran the license plate and knew it was Sabrina's car, but I'm not sure they knew who was actually driving the car. I've convinced myself of that, even though I realized that what Paula said. Addicted, maybe that's a fake story after all. Regarding the four... Yeah, it, it does sound a little shaky, Addicted. Um, that's why I brought it up. That's why I'm asking all of you. We have Bonita leading Phil Klein off in the wrong direction. We have only Rob getting out of the car. We have them seemingly stopping. They're ceasing, I should say, their search after this. Um, Sheree is saying, no, I don't think that that happened. Uh, Sheree is, is doubting the story of the four of what they did that morning. Bree says, maybe Khan and Sabrina killed Colton Molly and made this story up. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure what, I mean, this, this whole story, Bree, you're going to have to expound on that a little bit. Carrie, from experience, they probably did know who was driving it. They probably knew it was his girlfriend's car. I guarantee they ran the plate. Okay. Paula, that story about the horse and the ATV just doesn't make sense. Half-hearted attempt to search. So I think what we're saying here is we have doubts about that too. And it's not just because we're, we're not necessarily suspicious people. I think what we're saying is that who we think we are, and once again, I think all of us here, most of us maybe are of adult age, uh, maybe 30 years old and up. And if there's younger people in here, that's great too. But I think what we're saying um, that um, – we as adults, uh, our suspicions are that these early, these teenagers and early 20-something-year-olds are telling a wives' tale about this. Okay. But, Bree, please expound on this, made this whole story up. Uh, I, I think I need to hear more about that. Um, Carrie says, they're not going to boss's house in the middle of the night to arrest nephew. Well, um, remember, Joe Russell was his cousin, was Con Nip's cousin, and Con did not live with Joe Russell. And if they're so worried about, if they knew it was Con in the car, and they know that Sheriff Joe Russell and Con, you know, are related, then, you know, this is something that I still don't understand, and I don't think, you know, I don't, I have to admit, I don't think that I got a very... I didn't push that. I'm not saying that she didn't do a good job. I think Paula did a great job. I didn't maybe push that as much as I should. Um, if they're going to just let Khan go and not do anything about it, then why do anything about it at all? Why, why follow him at all? If they knew that this was him and everything, why do anything? This is something that I can't figure out. Um... Layla, maybe the horse and ATV weren't searching. Maybe they were disposing of bodies. Layla, that's possible. But we, unfortunately, we don't know who was on the horse, who was on the ATV. And allegedly, Rob didn't see it either, if we're to believe him. That's very... Um, where was Colt's car? I think Colt's car was at wherever it was the morning of July 7th when Con picked him and Molly up. That's where Colt's car was, uh, Joyce. Carrie, to me, the horse ATV scared off kids who probably knew the riders would be armed and riders would have advantage, especially if they snuck onto property. Okay, so Carrie's kind of going the opposite direction. She's kind of saying she could see a situation where they could be scared off if they were someplace that they weren't supposed to be. Okay. Lisa, could Rob know who was on the horse and Andrew Vane? He's framed to name them. Absolutely. Lisa, yes. Yes. Yes, I, that, I think that's – if you're asking me if that's a possibility, I think the answer is yes, and I think that's what all the other people in this group would say as well. Kelly, I wonder how old Rob, Benini, and the other two were at the time. They're all in their early 20s, late teens, early 20s, uh, 
Kelly because they were all friends with with Colt and or Molly. Of course, Molly's 17, Colt's 21. I'm guessing they were all around that age as well. Kerry, they probably figure it would be swept under rug if they didn't catch him behind Will of the car. Okay, Kerry. Sandy, what I don't understand is why was Colt in the car with Khan if they didn't like each other? It just doesn't make sense. Um, uh, Sandy, uh, that's something that unfortunately we're, uh, we just don't know. Um, we just don't know. And uh, six years later, uh, even the people who know, as the best Paula could do was that Colt thought Khan was going to help him with some sort of drug deal or something. That's the only thing we still have after exactly uh, six years, Sandy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and as I stated earlier, what's even more confusing to me is that Colt is calling Rob, who must be a friend, but then when Rob gets to Khan's house, Khan says to Rob, remember where we dumped that Mustang? So it seems at some point Rob was involved with Khan in some sort of disposing of a stolen car. I don't know. And this is, and then this is what then leads to the suspicion that Rob isn't telling the truth about hearing an ATV, you know, and a horse when he is the only one to claim that. When it's clear that he and Khan have some sort of prior relationship having to do with chases and the police and everything else. Uh, Carrie, that blows me away too, Sandy. Yeah. Cherie says drug users all run together at some point. That, well, Cherie, that may be true. But it, it seems to me, though, that Khan was involved in drugs, Colt was involved in drugs, but um, they, weren't, they weren't friends and, and didn't hang out. So, But I, I can't disagree with you, uh, Cherie. Uh, unfortunately, none of us, uh, I think most of us here, maybe uh, none of us here, or very few of us here, knew Colt and Molly personally. So I don't know. Um, Layla, so those previous stolen cars, does anyone know if they were reported stolen at the time, found or were owners recompensated for their loss? Um, Layla, yes, uh, I think we mentioned that in the interview. Layla, Paula said something, or I thought, about how those cars were not found until after until like a year later like 2014 and by that time those and they were all cars that had been stolen before colt and molly disappeared so they had been missing for quite a while and i think by that time the owners of those cars had already been compensated for uh their losses now it very well may be that there was some sort of large insurance scam going on that involved Khan working with these owners. I don't know. But uh, my understanding is those people eventually were compensated through their insurance companies or wherever uh, for the thefts. Yeah, but Cherie, yes, drug users all run together at some point. Um, the issue is why were these two, once again, I don't, is it accurate to call Colt a drug dealer? Was that his only job? I don't know. We know that he dabbled in selling drugs. He was a drug seller. And um, you know, that's certainly possible. Uh, Layla, that's why I was wondering some kind of scam. Very well could be, Layla. Okay. Uh, so we do find it strange that Colton, uh, Molly's friends didn't look for them harder. Does Sabrina know what happened? I think the consensus is yes. What happened after the four left Khan's house on July 8th? I think that what we're saying is we, a majority, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a consensus, but a majority of us, uh, uh, we the group, uh, feel that maybe that story isn't 100% accurate. Of course, on top of everything else, we know Benita was in that group, took Phil Klein in a different direction. Let's just entertain this. Um, what was in Khan's mind? When he deserted Colt and Molly, and I have it Missy for some reason, uh, Colt and Molly out there that night. What was in Khan's mind? Why did he desert them and leave them there? 
And why didn't, when they called him, didn't he go back out there to get them when they called? Why didn't he, when he, he left that car there, why didn't he go get them and bring them along and just leave the car there without anybody there? Any insight into that at all as to why, um, you know, let me just maybe put some possibilities. Did Khan just think, ah, oh, they'll find their way out of here and, you know, we'll hook up later sometime to, you know, laugh about what happened? Did he leave them there because he was going to try to make it look like they were the ones who stole the car? Did he take off? Did he think that they were behind him? And then he gets to his house and they weren't with him and didn't feel like going back out. And he figured by the time I go back in there, they'll be gone. Because, you know, once again, being that we know Molly and Colt's phone records, all the calls, I believe, were going out from the phones. I don't believe there's any new, I, at least nothing that Paula has ever told me, that Khan ever called them to say, hey, did you find your way out of there? Hey, where are you? Hey, I thought you were following me back to my house. Nothing like that. All of the calls between Colt, Molly, and Khan were of them calling him, not him calling them. So once again, I come back to what was in Khan's mind when he deserted Colt and Molly out there that night? Uh, Kerry says he deserted them to save his own booty. Bree, like after the car crashed. Yes, like after the car crashed. Uh, addicted says because he was selfish. Good a reason as any. Uh, or self-absorbed, I should say. Selfish works for me, addicted. Paul, I'm not sure he really gave them another thought once he walked away. Okay. We're going to come back to that, Paula. Layla, if he hadn't left them there, they could have disputed the stolen car story that Sabrina... Uh, told the cops. Okay, Layla, I, I, I like your thinking there. Carrie, who was DJ for Molly to call him 33 times without there? Um, uh, he was obviously a friend of Molly's. I mean, maybe that's obvious. Uh, DJ Epley was a guy that I think was one of the first people called. Um, just because it was Molly's phone does not mean it was Molly calling him. It very well could have been Colt using Molly's phone. We talked about that. But um, he, he was a friend. He was one of the first people they called. He must be, he must be one of the more reliable people that they know that, hey, we, you know, we get stuck out. We can call DJ. He'll figure it out. 33 times, it seems like a lot, but I've never been lost. So, and maybe... Maybe DJ was having reception issues. I don't know. Um, Lisa says, I think they argued about the car chase. Perhaps Molly and Colt were angry at Khan for starting the chase and the risk he took with them in the car. Khan was angry and walked off. Lisa, very reasonable uh, thought process there. Very reasonable. So after that, they're standing there arguing, and Khan says, the hell with you two. I'm out of here. Well... Then I guess the next question is, if they did have some sort of conversation like that, why didn't, you know, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is, are we to believe that Colt and Molly didn't know where they were as soon as the chase stopped? Because I think if they didn't know where they were when the chase stopped, they would have made more of an effort to follow Khan when he stomped off. I think. And given that Khan had this reputation of stealing cars and everything. Once again, Colt's friend Rob knew about it. So I'm taking for granted Colt knew about it. Colt had to have known, you know what? I don't know where we are, but I know we're close to Khan's house. Um, Carrie, but why blow up his phone and not call other people? Well, they did call other people, Carrie. They called DJ quite a lot, but... They called other people. They called Khan. They called Rob uh, and, and some other people. It just, I think, is the DJ got called the most, at least to start. Um, to distance him to create an alibi. Uh, I like your idea, Jasmine. 
Um, that sounds very, it does. Lisa, you sounds very plausible. Shree, I think they all ran in different directions. And Mullen, Colton, Connor, and another. I think he left them there, and I believe he did go back out there after things calmed down. Okay. Layla, or he told them the car wasn't drivable and they had to go get a different car and come back for them. Ooh. Layla, I like that idea a lot. Something I hadn't thought of. Maybe he did tell them, yeah, I'll be back. Yeah, I'll be back. And then he doesn't come back. See, this is why we have the think tank, people. To get um, some kind of new idea I like that. Layla, very good. Good job on that. That could be. He lied to them. Took off, lied to them. Okay, good one. Addiction. I think the con god is part of the deal. So it was every man for himself, and he just left them on their own. Okay. Carrie, going out there during daylight sure sounds vastly different than midnight-ish. Yeah, this, yeah. Layla, but then how long before they'd realize he wasn't coming back when they tried calling him and he didn't answer? Right. I, I think that that makes sense too, Layla. And so then they start calling all, all of these other people. It very well may be the con lied to him, and con does sound like a very good liar. Billy, one thing I can't seem to let go of, why did two girlfriends later state that Molly did them wrong dirty? We didn't, uh, we could talk about that, Billy, but I will get to that in a second. No, we'll get to that. Cherie, why wouldn't they just walk out with him? Uh, I, I, I have a good quiz. I, uh, don't have an answer, but it's a good question. Uh, Joyce, if they were close enough for Chon's Con to walk, why didn't Molly and Colt walk to his house? Well, you know, the thought is, Joyce, that they didn't know where they were, but we don't have any proof of that. The only thing we know is that Colt and Molly were calling people to come get them. And the reason people couldn't find them is because Colt and Molly couldn't direct them to where they were because they didn't know where they were. That's the, the bad thing. And once again, this comes back to, did Colt and Molly's phones have GPS or not? If they were track phones, they didn't. If they were smartphones, then they did. Ellie, in July in Oklahoma, I can only assume the woods and fields had tall grass or bushes. Why not follow the bird of Britain crop parts and broken branches and grass when it got light out? Kelly, good point. Good point. I don't get it either. That's why we talk about this stuff. Great point. Okay, especially for people that get lost easily. Yeah, as Colt seemingly did. That's what Paula said. Addicted. But Colt didn't Colt call Con. If Con, if Colt was waiting on Con, wouldn't he have said that to some of the friends they called? Yeah. Addicted, I, I think. But, you know, the truth is, Addicted, we don't have the content of every call that was made okay all we have is a general feeling from the calls that they were with con there was a chase there they, they got ditched the car the car doesn't work con isn't here can you come pick us up um we don't have the content of every single conversation it very well may be that that Colt or Molly said to somebody they were waiting on Con, but I think after six years, it kind of everything is just kind of gelled into a general feeling about the calls, not the specifics of every any one call. Uh, Kelly, I know you had a broken ankle, but wouldn't you figure it out if you were lost? Yeah, once again, if he broke his ankle, then he wouldn't be able to walk, and maybe that's why Molly stayed with him. There's you know there's something else. Um, uh, Sheree, I mean, if you agree it's possible he was going to get another car, then I don't see why they wouldn't just go with him. Well, maybe, uh, Sheree, the reason they didn't go with him is because Colt broke his ankle and couldn't walk. And so Molly decided to stay with him and said, well, I'll wait with him. You come back. Um, Sheree, don't forget these kids have been up for seven days straight. Um... Was that established in the interview? I know that it was brought up earlier in our conversation. Uh, I have to admit, I, and I, I apologize, but I, it was a long interview, and I will admit maybe I missed a couple things here and there. But, you know, it, as far as me remembering what was said, 
but is, is that was that truly established? Uh, Layla, Shri, good question. All I can think of is he might have told them he'd be right back to just rest and he couldn't get them. Paula, Khan didn't want them to go with him. Well, surely, surely uh, yes, it was established they were up for seven days straight. Okay. Well, the only thing I can say to that is that it seemed, even though they were up for seven days straight, that, that Molly and Colt were in their clear enough mind to say, hey, we're lost. People come and get us. And they could find people's names on their phones to call them and, and everything. So, once again, going back to like, it's like the high question. Were they high? They might have been. But they weren't so high that they didn't know that they were in trouble. So they might have been up for seven days straight, but that doesn't mean that they were so zonked out that they didn't know when they were in trouble as well. So I don't know if seven days straight has something to do with it or not. I don't know. Um, um, uh, yes, Paula told us Jessica said that. Well, was, here's the deal. Is Jessica believable? If, you know, that's Paula said that, but... It's not like Colt or Molly told somebody, you know, that's believable. We have to remember, we don't know what Je makes Jessica tick. She, she disowned her own text. I think that was fairly, I think we established that in the interview. It, you know, it, it may be true. Maybe she's telling the total truth. Absolutely possible. But I would not um, bank on that given her, her statements in other areas. So I don't know. It very well may be the case. It's just that uh, it's hard to accept that as total fact when later she said, oh, yeah, that stuff before somebody stole my phone and everything, which, you know, I don't know. Um, Layla says, is it humanly possible to not sleep seven days without becoming delirious and non-functional? Uh, I think if you take enough meth and everything, I think it is possible to do that. I don't know. Um, I've stayed up for 48 hours in a row when I used to work at 7-Eleven, but that's the only thing I would know about that. Um, addicted said, Colt apparently broke his ankle after he climbed the tree to see where they were, so that's not a reason why Khan left them. Addicted, that's a good point. So that couldn't have been the reason. That's, that's a good point. Thank you for pointing that out, Addicted. Uh, I, Carrie says, I think Jessica is mostly believable. <laughs> well, uh, how do we pick out what mostly believable? So, how do we pick out which part to believe, Carrie? I mean, do you believe her story about the texts and somebody stealing her phone and everything? And, you know, being that uh, somebody just up here and I said I would come back to it, who was it that brought it up? Uh, Billy brought out, one thing I can't seem to let go of. Why did two girlfriends later state well, that Molly did them wrong dirty? Was she left out there abandoned as some kind of punishment, cruel joke? So, you know, this is you know what Billy brought up earlier, and then Jessica brought it up herself that Dal Molly did them wrong and everything else. I mean, if that's the case, how you know how can we believe Jessica? She's mostly believable. That may be, but which stuff do we are we going to choose to believe, and which stuff are we going to choose not to believe? Adrian, I don't think they followed Con because Colin was hurt and Molly stayed behind. Con left them saying he was going to come back, but didn't. Layla. Then it's no surprise they had no idea what was happening or where they were if they were up for seven days. Okay. Allison, I don't think I've heard anybody mention this possibility, so I could be way off. But what if somebody actually did pick them up and harm them in a different location? We're going to get to that in a second, Allison. Carrie, I think she wanted to tell mommy's mom, Molly's mom off while thinking she could stay in mom's good graces. I, I don't I don't I, I I don't know about that Carrie. I, I, I think it's possible. I just I, I'm not sure I want to believe anything that Carrie's or that not Carrie. Uh, Jessica said at all. Um I just uh, I guess let's just keep it to this. Being that Jessica would say that and say claim I don't know if we can believe the seven days up without any sleep at all, if it's coming from her. You know, if it was coming from, you know, somebody else that didn't pull the things that Jessica did, I would be more inclined to believe it. It's, but it's not about me. 
I mean, it's not about me. This is, all of you are going to continue to have your theories and thoughts and everything, and I want that to happen. But I'm just trying to make sure as we contemplate these things that we don't forget about other things. Uh, sure, yes, it's possible on Meth to stay up for seven days, but it's hard to navigate locations and directions if anyone has been up that long. Plus, they were asking for water. Sheree says, I believe Jessica. Okay. Carrie, I snooped. Jessica named her baby after Molly. To me, that is kind of huge. Hmm. So she named her daughter after somebody she says screwed her over. Okay. Layla, I love your facial expressions, Ed. You're, um, they are natural. Um, so let me go back. Um, we've been at this for an hour and 13 minutes. See how fast these think tanks can go? Let's just get to this. And I, this is where uh, Allison says, I don't think I've heard anybody mention this possibility, so I could be way off. But what if someone actually did pick them up and harm them in a different location? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that is a question on my list. Allison, and it is what if Khan isn't involved at all? What then could be the other possibilities for Colt and Molly's disappearance? Because once again, um, we have to think about it this way. There is proof that Khan was at home, let me see, and Colt and Molly were still alive. Okay, we know this. Because of the phone calls. We know this. We know this to be a fact. Okay? And then the four drive from cons over to where they to where maybe Colt and Molly are. Somewhere in there is when those call their phones went off. So Con would have had to have been very quick. Very quick to um, go out there himself to get Colt and Molly. And he would have had to have done it without being seen, without being heard. And then would have had to have done something to both of them, himself, dispose of them, etc. Okay? It's... It, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it certainly seems like he would be threading a very tight needle there. Kind of walking on a tightrope above Niagara Falls, no net below. It's possible, but very risky. So what if he's, what are some other possibilities? Not that Khan's not involved, but that Khan didn't go out there after the four left. What if he stayed at home? What are the other possibilities? Um, so Sandy says, Jessica did tell Molly's mom that Molly was in danger, but never went into detail. Uh, yes, Sandy. And, you know, the thing is, is we hear a lot about that in drug cases. It's amazing how many people can say, yeah, I was really worried about them, and then these people never go into specifics. But, you know, I hear, you know, we hear that a lot in a lot of, dis you know, a lot of drug Disappearances that involve drugs. Carrie, would she name her baby after her best friend five years later if she was sketchy? That is what turned my opinion of her. Addiction. They were both holding product. Colt was fixing to have to lay down some time, so they went Ellie involved and tried finding their own way. Okay. Addiction. Carrie, did they go from calls to just text at some point? I don't remember. The, it was calls... Immediately to the phones being off, Carrie, once again, the way I remember it. Addicted. Could those four really have found them and everything said after that was a lie? Addicted, that's a, that's a possibility. It is. Yes. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but given the facts that we know, yes, addicted, um, it is possible. Cherie's saying they, you know, what else is another possibility that Molly and Colt died out there by themselves? Then the issue is why haven't they been, you know, the, of course, then the thing is uh, why haven't they been found? You know, and, and we have to remember something that their phone pings put them in the area 
where the car was eventually found. So it's not like, um, you know, they were miles and miles away and they, you know, and they, everybody was looking in the wrong location. Uh, it seems that the, the it seems that Colt and Molly were in the exact location um, where the car was. The problem was they could not direct DJ or anybody else to their location, but their phones proved that they were there. So once again, getting back to my uh, a question here. What if Khan is involved in all? What could then be some other possibilities? It, which, I mean, Khan would still be involved. Is it possible that he got someone else, maybe two other people, three other people, to go out there to find Colt and Molly instead of himself? Of course, we haven't talked about his uncle Colby, who sounds like a, a very suspicious guy. Maybe he had some friends. It was near his property. He could go out there and maybe do his nephew a favor. Carrie, but didn't someone else, Con, have their phones? No. Uh-uh. I don't know. I don't know where you got that, Carrie. No. Um, Colton Molly's phones have never been found. Carrie, but they called people up till phones died. Well, their friends might have died, Carrie. All we know that they went off. We don't know if they died or not. They could have been shut off and the batteries taken out of them. Um, we don't know. Th we don't know if they they died or not. As in, battery died. Uh, Lisa, if the horse ADV story is true, is it possible those individuals are the killers? Sure. Con sent them, maybe. Yeah, Lisa. Yes, that's a possibility. Yeah. And you'll remember, I even asked Paula right at the end of the conversation, the interview I had with her, did she think that those four were on the verge of finding Colt and Molly? She said yes. So Lisa, yes, I think that what you say there is possible. Layla, if he got something to, someone to help him, I think it was family because I don't think other people would keep their mouths shut this long. Layla, I agree with you. Colby and Willie, possible carry. Yes, that's those are two probably good choices. Addicted. If the grand jury testimonies be believed, they were a party later that day. Did I hear that correctly? I'm just confused by this timeline, honestly. Uh, addicted. You know, see, that's something that I'm a little confused about, too, uh, Addicted, this whole party thing. I got to tell you, I'm not sure that ever happened. Okay. Um, what doesn't make any sense to me, Addicted, is that surely a night after being stuck out in the middle of nowhere, that in their phones dying, that they would not, whether they're high or not, they wouldn't be in the mood to go to some party later on July, I mean July 8th. Mainly because surely then it would leak out that other people saw them later that day, and that's never happened. Um, I'm inclined to not believe the grand jury testimony. I have no proof of that. But I'm in personally inclined not to believe it for those reasons. It also could be that this party they're talking about happened before the chase, not the night after and everything, like July 8th. Summer. I'm inclined to believe that maybe they were at a party before the chase started. That's the only thing that would make sense to me. Just me, though. None of you. Please do not be phased by my personal beliefs. Um, Sandy, my problem is if they didn't have anything to hide, why not let Paul or anyone search the property where the car was found? Suspicious to me. Well, I think that the reason they didn't want to let you to do that is because I think other illegal things were going on out there, Sandy, having to do with drugs. Um... Yeah, the, the, you know, the timeline is, uh, you know, uh, him saying, uh, addicted saying, I don't know if you're here or not, um, no, none of my business. Uh, I'm just confused by this timeline, honestly. And yeah, and I think the reason we're confused by it, addicted, is I think because it's because of Nip, Con Nip, trying to confuse it, I think. Uh, Kelly, could the party have been where they left from before the chase? Yes. 
Was it ever established where they came from? Um, you know, and that's the thing. I don't remember there ever being established where this party was that's mentioned in the grand jury, which once again makes me suspicious that it didn't happen. Um, Carrie saying uh, maybe the same day. Carrie, no one knows where Polly was dropped off earlier in the day, so that could be that. Sandy Paulus did say they were at a party at Sabrina's house that night before the chase. Well, there you go. Carrie, I think they have a lot to hide, not just Molly, Molly and Colt. Okay. So I guess what we're saying, though, is that if Khan did not go out there himself, then he could have gotten others to do it. But it should be known, though, that if he did do that, these were people who had to be close and had to have been ready uh, at a moment's notice. Because he would know, once again, Khan would know, hey, there are these people looking for them, and if they find them. But once again, it comes back to, why would, you know, it, it still comes back to, if Colt and Molly were murdered, why were they murdered? Why? It, you know, uh, I, I, you know, if Khan wanted to murder them, why didn't he do it the night before? wanted to do it the night before and he, if he wanted to enlist Colby his uncle Colby or anyone else why didn't he just call him and say hey meet me here I'm gonna stop this car here we'll take care of these two people what was this whole thing with letting Colt and Molly stay out in these woods for hours and hours and hours and then allegedly theoretically possibly no proof of this keep in mind no proof why would he then decide to get rid of them. Why not just do it the night before? It Was it simply because, um, you know, why leave them there? You know, what, could this just, I mean, was it simply when, you know, he goes, well, you know what? I better go out there and get these two. <clears throat> They're just going to cause me problems. He gets there, Colt's all ticked off. They get in a fight and something happens. Maybe. Maybe. But then why cover that up if it was like self-defense? You know. Um, Carrie, his reaction though, balled up, rocking. I'm almost convinced he knew and was involved in the murder. Um, Addicted says, could it, uh, let me, I, I can, I'm going to show this. Um, addicted could have something to do with her apparently being raped at the party and Colt came to her defense it could it could once again we just if the party happened uh, I'm inclined to believe it happened before the chase so once again if that's th this stuff happened before the chase and somebody wanted her to keep her mouth shut then why wait till 9 the next morning to do that when you could have done it out the middle of nowhere at midnight Carrie, did they get to his house? Altercation happened, but was disposed back out there. Yeah. It's, once again, this is... Um, we just... You know, the, I, I guess what we're saying here is we're all a little stumped. <laughs> it seems. We're stumped because it does seem... Let's just put it this way. I think 99.9% .9 of us believe that Colt and Molly are dead. They're dead because somebody killed them. Okay? We don't know who that is. We have some ideas, but it could be somebody totally different. But if the people who were mentioned in the interview had something to do with it, we have a hard time understanding why they were going to kill them. Why not do it the night before? Why let... Colt and Molly kill all the or call all these people and everything else and then go back out there and do it when they know that other people are looking for them and they might all get caught up, you know, you know, and be seen. It's hard to understand. I think that this is I think this is the main part, given that this case seems to be getting better and better well known. Of course, there's going to be a series on it. This is the part that I think uh, causes people to be compelled by this. They can't get it out of their minds. 
because you had these two people trying to call for help for nine hours. Nobody called, nobody found them. And then they disappeared. I think that's the reason. Uh, I believe he got there and they were already dead and he covered up. Con, uh, let me just put in some names here for you, Sheree. I believe Khan got there and they were already dead and Khan covered it up it, and but because by that time every knew but he knew that they were with Khan. That's interesting, Sherry. Okay. Uh, Layla, maybe Khan left them out there without water, etc. to die of natural causes, then disposed of them somewhere on his property, so if they were found he'd be less likely to be implicated. Yeah. Well, you know the the thing is, Layla, you know, the, a human can go without water for three days. So leave them out there for three days? Maybe. I know that they were allegedly on drugs, and maybe they've been up for seven days and everything else, but um, I think so waiting for a 17-year-old and a 21-year-old to die of natural causes out in the middle of nowhere. Um, maybe. I know many people agree with me, though, and that's okay. We're allowed to disagree with people. And I'm, a, you know, I, Layla says, only Sleashree, I have no idea what to think. Me, t me too. So when I say these things, I'm just thinking out loud, as I'm sure all of you are doing too. Um, uh, Billy agrees with Sheree. Paula, if Khan wanted them dead, why wouldn't he have taken the phones away? Right? Paula, I agree. Carrie, I think the only reason Khan gets away with it at all is because cousin is sheriff. Well, he's not sheriff anymore. Maybe, are you saying he got rid of it at the time because of that? That's possible. But, you know, uh, you know, the thing I keep coming back to is that this thing whole got started in a different county, in a different jurisdiction. And we have to remember that Khan eventually did spend time in jail for the things that he did. Sheree, can they, if they already dehydrated on drugs, they specifically asked for water. Mm. Layla, I know you're just throwing another idea out there. I, I get it, Layla. No, uh, I, I get it. I, I'm not here to, you know. I'm just trying to think natural causes. Mm. You know, once again, I think that this is one of those things that we're never going to know the answer to that until... This is resolved. I will tell you, and being that we're going for an hour and a half and my voice is starting to give out, um, I will tell you, uh, I, being that some of you do not have access to the blog, I will now tell you uh, what I think happened. I do believe that this was a plan that started um, on July 7th. I don't think that Khan got, ever got over the idea that that girl left him for Colt. I believe that Khan and Sabrina came up with a way for her to get a new car, for Khan to evade any charges that he would ever suffer regarding any of the cars that he's stolen, and they would be they figured out a way to be able to peg it on Colt and Molly. All right, so the plan was to get in this chase, dump the car, leave Colt and Molly there. Con jets it back to his house. He's thinking that eventually somebody's going to start looking for Colt and Molly. They're going to find them. They're going to find Sabrina's car. She's going to file, file the theft report. And being that Colt and Molly were found the car and not Con. And his family is, of course, going to cover for him. That they thought, once again, this is not, you know, this is not some Bond supervillain. This is Con Nep, a guy who does drugs and, and everything. But in, in, in their mind, it might make sense that they were going to try to pin this all on Colton Molly. But I think what got in the way of their plan was that they did not predict that Colt and Molly would be able to call people out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe Khan had no idea what the cell phone reception or something like that was out there. And when those four pulled up to Khan's house that day, he knew that he was screwed. 
that their plan wasn't going to work. Knew that if Colton Molly were to get to talk to the police or anybody about all of this, that he would get in trouble. And of course, Sabrina would get in trouble because she's filing that theft report. The con says, you know what? I have to protect myself. I have to protect Sabrina. And I have to go to, I have to get somebody. And we're going to go out there and take care of these two. Because the fact is this. If that happened, it worked for a while. It worked until Sabrina got charged with filing a, a bad theft report. And then, of course, everything that came from that. That is my personal theory. I believe this was a scam that started on July 7th. Once again, just my theory, given what I think I know about the facts and what I know about the people. Why didn't Khan just kill them initially again? Because I think that he wanted it to be blamed on them. I think he wanted, I think he wanted Colt and Molly to know that he fooled them. All right? And I think that if they were to end up dead and missing with the car, that he knew that the, the car theft story wouldn't quite work as well. But if you have two people who are still alive and everything, that's different. Mm. Uh, have the bodies been found? No, nobody's been found, Joyce. Uh, Kelly, has a warrant for the land ever been served? Well, the cars that were on that land, the stolen cars were found and they were dragged out, Kelly. I feel there's enough evidence for a search warrant of the land. Well, they were out there. They didn't find anything. Allison, they wouldn't have been able to keep their phones if they were left to die from natural causes. Also, they wouldn't have been left so close so close to people. Jasmine, I agree with you, Ed, but I don't know if natural causes are murder. I honestly don't know. Okay. Well, we're going to have to leave it at that. We've been going for an hour and 35 minutes. My voice is uh, giving out. If any of you want to know, this is what these th think tanks are like every week. It's usually a lot less people. Usually we only have five, six, seven, ten people in the group, not as many as we have tonight. But if you would like to be a part of the think tank every week, uh, please sign up on Patreon at the $12 a month level or above, and you automatically get access to... Think tanks are always at 7 p.m. Eastern every Sunday evening. So you can kind of clear your schedule for it. Or if you miss it, you can listen to it afterwards on the unlisted link that all Patreon supporters get that the public does not get. Okay? But if you thought this was fun, if you thought this was interesting, if you want your ideas to make their way back to the guest, um... The way to do that is to be part of the Unfound Think Tank. This is the only uh, program, Unfound is the only program out there that does something like this. Where we really get down into the nuts and bolts of every disappearance. And on top of that, these ideas, these thoughts, these feelings make it directly back to the guest of the program. If that's something you'd like to be a part of, please sign up on Patreon. Um, but I'm going to be going. Uh, Layla, I'm glad you had fun. Um, I don't know what to think of the backpack and the shoes. I don't know if it's ever been proven to be connected to the disappearance uh, at all, Kelly. Um, Paula, thanks for letting us get into I'll be signing up as soon as possible. Uh, Paula, it would be great to have you. Uh, I'm going to go now. Thank you so much for joining in this think tank. Uh, this think tank will be available to always. This one tonight will be free on YouTube. Of course, the rest until Sheree and I decide to do this again will all be private. You will have to be a member on Patreon to take part. But this one in particular, if you would like to go back and read the comments and, re and watch the whole thing, an hour and a half of it, you will be able to do that um, all, all the time because this particular one will always be free. Um, thanks a lot. Addicted, Allison, everyone, thank you so much. I'll see you on Wednesday night when we'll go back to the, uh, of course, what we always do on, on Wednesday nights, uh, talking about a whole bunch of different things. Good night.